Welcome to this teaching day. It's so good to have you all joined with us today. Uh, it's been such an exciting project to be part, a part of, and I'm so glad so many people could sign up to talk about the things we're going to talk about today. So great to have this opportunity. And what I want to look at, and thanks to Chris for what he shared, is why do these things happen? So why do these things, specifically COVID-19, why do these things happen? Why would God allow these things or send these things deliberately upon us at this particular point in time? How can we understand our current situation? Well, before I go on, what I would like to just say is that COVID-19 causes suffering. And for that reason, I think we can extrapolate out the conclusions we have about covid sometimes to just suffering in general. So it answers the suffering question in general. I just want to start also by saying, if you have been through a lot of pain because of COVID-19, I really do understand. I lost my stepdad at the end of last year in, in pretty devastating circumstances. And I had to seek God's will on that and pray to understand why would God let that happen or made it happen, let it happen. And I had to work that out. And that was painful and still feels a little painful. So I do understand if you're going through these troubles. But we look at this question today, why do these things happen? And to do that, I want to just consider three, two options mainly with a little side option. The first option really is, and first of all, I'd like to just say that if you don't agree with these options, that's absolutely fine. It's not a salvation issue. And if you think differently, that's not a big deal. But here's what I believe and here's the options, first of all. The options, first of all, is that God directly caused this as an act of judgment. The second option is that he allowed it to happen and didn't directly cause it. And the third option is not an option so much as it's based on the last two, which is, well, why would God let this virus or bacteria exist at all? Why does it even exist? Why does it even need to exist? Why did God let it exist? So the first option is why would God or did God directly send the COVID-19 as an act of judgment? God did send pestilence as an act of judgment. Um, scripture references to see there is Ezekiel 14.21, Leviticus 26.25 and Numbers 14 verse 12. Ezekiel 14 verse 21 tells us this is what the Sovereign Lord says, How much worse will it be when I send against Jerusalem my four dreadful judgments, sword, famine, wild beasts and plague? In many other places, it's only the three that are mentioned, sword, famine, and plague. So these are one of the big three things that God sent. So he did send it as a direct act of judgment in the Old Testament at times, but a few points to consider. And we'll look at these very briefly, and I would encourage you to look into the references some more yourselves. A few points to consider. Firstly, illness is not always from God. In 2 Kings 13 verse 14, Elisha, who was a man of God, doing the will of God right to the end of his life, came down with an illness that he ended up dying from. So it was very clear at this point as a man of God that God did not send that as an act of judgment. When it was a direct act of judgment, God often tells us, I personally seem to feel from looking at scriptures, he always seemed to give the reason for the judgment and its intended purposes. Ezekiel 14 verse 23, the verse we just looked at in Ezekiel 14, it says you will know why. At the end when all this happens, you, he says to, Ezekiel says to the people, you will know why this has happened. In verse 23, when, when I do this, you'll know what the reason was. You'll know that it was me that did it. Leviticus 26, 25, again, look up these references. It says, if, I, if, if you remain hostile, if you refuse to listen, if you do not accept correction, then the pestilence will come. In other words, it's a response to actions that I'm telling you about ahead of time so when it does happen you'll know that I told you this would happen. So God often if not always told us the reason for the judgment being sent, the illness as a result of judgment. Um, the other thing is one of the big three, the sword, famine and plague were his intended acts of direct judgment. When was the last time you heard someone saying about famine being a judgment of God? It's not often said Africa and many places in the world suffer famines regularly. Yet we don't look at it and say this is a direct act of punishment from God. Yet it was described as such in the Old Testament. So it's not always used as an act of judgment. Nor I thought is Jesus corrects in the New Testament the neat cause and effect of why bad things happen. In John 9 when his apostles asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because he sinned or his parents sinned? Jesus said, no, it's not about his sin. It's an act. God is being revealed in his life through it. But it's not because of sin. 
Luke 13, verses 1 to 3, we know very well about the tar of Siloam that fell on people, the people that Pilate had mixed their blood with the sacrifices, horrendous, horrible things. And the people, Jesus preempted that the people were going to ask, why do these terrible things happen? He says, do you think it was because of their sin? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all perish. Jesus said, I tell you, no. That's not the reason. It's not necessarily a direct act of judgment. So Jesus deals with the neat cause and effect that they could have, the apostles, and we can have this happen for this reason. Jesus says, not necessarily. So the other thing, Jesus healed every disease and sickness. It tells us in Matthew 4.23, Matthew 9.35, Matthew 10 verse 1, that Jesus went around and healed every disease and sickness Every disease and sickness. Would it seem likely that God sent the sickness as an act of judgment only for Jesus then to come and remove it again? Not necessarily. The sin was not necessarily, or the illness, sorry, was not necessarily an act of judgment in that instance. The other point is that there's no direct mention in the Bible of COVID-19, of viruses by name as such. Yes, they're mentioned in Matthew 24 generally, but they're mentioned generally as birth pains and not specifically by name or their intended punishment and for what reason. So that's just some points to consider about why I personally feel we cannot attribute this as a direct act of judgment from God. You may believe them things, that's okay to believe them things, but personally from seeing this, I don't see any clear explicit reason. And for these points, I think it's more likely that the second option is is, is more likely that God allowed this to happen. As a direct result of not causing it, clearly he's allowed it because he's an all-powerful God. Now, before I give us an explanation of why God would allow it, I just want to give us a quick little run-through on why have viruses or bacteria at all? Why even allow them? Well, viruses and bacteria are important beneficial microbes for human health and agriculture and also for other reasons. While humans can't live without carbon, nitrogen, protection from disease, ability to digest food, we rely upon bacteria and viruses in order to do them things, in order to keep us healthy. Without them, after a year without bacteria, photosynthesis would likely cease. Advanced exist, existence of advanced, advanced life form would be dependent on bacteria and viruses. They're responsible for putting nitrogen into the, nitrogen into the soil, Um, producing vitamin K in our bodies, keeping the carbon cycle in balance. It basically means that viruses and bacteria are not just altogether evil things, entities with no intended purpose. But just like DNA, God has allowed things to naturally come up, disorder to come about. Again, with DNA replication, it causes human diseases once it's left its own devices to some extent. So these things have a purpose and they're not necessarily inherently evil and bad in themselves. They have an intended purpose also. So that's just a little bit on that. But why would God, as I said, allow these things to happen? That is the question. If he didn't send it, why allow? Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. It tells us in these passages that God's ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So it puts a great perspective here on the fact that God's ways are higher than ours and his thoughts than our thoughts. God can see the end from the beginning. He knows things that we don't know and he can see outcomes that we don't yet see regarding suffering and specifically COVID-19. But why allow suffering? We can't say for sure, but just some thoughts on why God could allow suffering and what good comes about via suffering, and in this instance, specifically COVID-19. Number one, suffering, COVID-19 maybe for us, orientates us to the more important things in our lives. C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, but he shouts in our pains. It's his megaphone to rouse an otherwise deaf world. That was from C.S. Lewis. Pain makes us attend to things we may otherwise ignore. As a physio, I need to reproduce pain. I tell my patients this because it helps me know the structure at fault, why it's happening that way so we can solve the problem. What's changed for us during this pandemic? Many people I've spoken to and I've seen online have had had increased focus on the more important things in their life. Family, 
time with their wife, time with their children, the valuable things in life that, that they should appreciate more than they did before. Yes, the COVID-19 and the lockdown brought stress and anxiety, but they enjoyed the pleasure in the more important things in life that they hadn't considered just as important before that took place. There's an increased number of people asking spiritual questions, seeking God. Bible searches online have never been so high. Bible seals have never been so high. Um, we've heard about more and more baptisms into Christ during this time. A couple of teens from Belfast, um, some of them have been studying for a while, got baptized during this particular period of time as well. So it seems like people are begun to orientate themselves to what the truly important things in life are as a result of this period of time, which, as many would say, has been a time of suffering, potentially. The second thing, it reveals our need for God. One of the things I realize about life is comfort obscures the truth. So when we're comfortable, we don't achieve very much. We don't get very far with any potential projects we're being considered. When we're comfortable, we don't strive after very much. The reality is, this time has demonstrated to us our vulnerability. Have you sensed our increased vulnerability on this spinning planet and these fragile bodies? Are we reliant on all these things that all of a sudden have been removed? So we realize we're not in control. And the reality of our situation dawns on us. We realize we need God. We need him more than we ever realized we did before. Disease was an incredible opportunity for people. In the scriptures, you'll have heard of King Asa. King Asa in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, he fell sick. And God had said to him, this is an opportunity for you to seek me and find what you're missing here. The sickness could have resulted in that, but for him it didn't. The same thing befell Hezekiah in 2 Chronicles 32. Hezekiah fell sick and he prayed out to God in his sickness and God gave him more time because he responded in the right way to his suffering. An incredible reference to that, Isaiah 38 verse 17. Isaiah or Hezekiah says, Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. He reflected on his troubles and he realized the benefit that it had brought him. The next point is that it demonstrates how much God cares. It's the best answer to the problem of suffering is that God suffered the most intense death and the witnessing of his son being punished for us that you could probably ever experience. God suffered intensely for us, which helps us to understand why suffering. Why is suffering needed? Why COVID-19? Why any form of suffering? God shows the necessity of suffering by having to go through it ourselves, himself, to, res to free us from that suffering. God removed our suffering by suffering for us. He demonstrated that he, how much he loved us because then he can know how it feels, but also showed us the necessity of suffering by being beaten, mocked and ridiculed and put to death on our behalf. It's the best explanation for the cause, the reasons for suffering. So with this in mind, I say to us today, it's not so much about why the coronavirus has come, but it's much more about our response to this. In other words, it can be a tremendous and unique opportunity for us. Just a few things to share from my own life that have happened as a result of this time that would never have happened otherwise. One year ago, I did a YouTube video to try and get a YouTube channel going, I watched it back, the light was bad, the sound was bad, I looked bad, I didn't like it, I didn't want to do one again. That was it. A year later, this time, as a result of COVID-19, the lockdown, the pandemic, I set up my YouTube channel and I went for it again. Something I thought I would never do. Up to now, there's over 6,000 views in two months on the Isaiah series that I've set up. I've had messages from all around the world saying how much this series has helped them. I've had contact from many non-Christians asking questions about God. Um, I've even, and this is the incredible one, started to monetize what I did over on Patreon. I've started to monetize what I do, potentially meaning that the dream I've had for a long time of working in the ministry to some level may be a reality in the future. I has kick-started things I would never have done otherwise. It's been an incredible time for me, and I never would have dreamt this would have happened. What has happened for you so far? What could God have been doing, and maybe you've already realized this, what could he be doing through the suffering and the COVID-19 experience that many of us have had? What is it that he's trying to do in our lives? Again, having simply allowed, more likely, 
the COVID-19 in our lives. I would just say to us today, we may need to view this time differently than we already have, or maybe even more than we already have. So thanks for joining me today. This is just some thoughts on God, for me, didn't necessarily directly send COVID-19 as a punishment, but it's more likely that he allowed it. His ways are higher than our ways, and he knows the end from the beginning and what this suffering can achieve for us. There's many potential good reasons for allowing this to happen. God grieves with those who are grieving. He showed it through what he experienced on our behalf. And also, and I pray we all experience this, this can be a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for us all to find God in a unique and great way and to do incredible things in our life. I do hope we enjoy the discussion. Thanks so much for joining me today. Amen.